Good morning, everyone, and welcome once again <clears throat> to the Baptist Bread Devotional and Scripture Song Broadcast for this 26th day of January, and it is Thursday, and we are closing down the month of January, and uh, next week uh, we'll be uh, going into February, in the middle of next week, so, wow, um, first month is uh, kind of dra uh, dragged, but then also flown by, so it's kind of been a little bit up and down, and so... Uh, the first um, month of this year is almost over, and we're still going, still going for Jesus, so hopefully you're still going for Jesus too. If not, well, let's get back on track, amen. And so um, today's uh, topic will be titled Secret Saints, and so before we get started on that, I'd like to greet you as always in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world, amen. And he too can be your Lord and Savior today, if he's not already. And so, just simply call upon the name of the Lord, and thou shalt be saved. Praise God. Alright, we're going to start with today's scripture song for the 26th. Uh, this is from Psalm 70, verse 4. So press play, and we'll sing along with Brother Dean and Sister Patty. Amen. Psalms 70, verse 4. Let, let all, all those that seek thee rejoice, rejoice and, and be glad in thee, and, and let such, such as love thy salvation say continually, let God be magnified. Amen. Let all those that seek thee rejoice and be glad in thee. And let such as love thy salvation say continually, Let God be magnified. Let all those that seek thee rejoice and be glad in thee. And let such as love thy salvation say continually, Let God be magnified. Let God be magnified. Amen. All right. Good scripture song there. So let's make sure we're always... Letting God be magnified. Amen. So put that back to yesterday's and we'll do those again towards the end of the broadcast. But now it's time to get into the Baptist bread for today. For Thursday, January 26th, titled Secret Saints. And today's author is, of course, Brother Tim Green from Revival in Our Times, Day Heights, Ohio. And so I'll read you the passage first and then we'll get into the topic. So Luke 11.33 is the passage and it says, No man... When he hath uh, lighted a candle, putteth it in a secret place, neither under a bushel, but on a candlestick, that they which uh, come in may see the light. Amen. Luke 11.33. So, Brother Tim Green writes here. He says in our topic today on secret saints, he says in our local airport we have a chapel. I believe most airports do, and everyone ought to go in there and pray before they fly. Hmm, that'd be a good idea. I uh, place the Baptist bread and other literature on the table provided by the chapel amongst the other stuff there. That's good. Amen. My thought today does not really have to do with that, but with uh, what I have seen or not or never seen. I have never seen another Christian in their praying. Ooh, <laughs> uh, I have observed Muslims kneeling on their uh, prayer mats facing the east and talking to a dead prophet. I have noticed Jews uh, with uh, phylacteries on their uh, foreheads and arms uh, bobbing as they do and praying to a God they worship, but worship while rejoicing, uh, rejecting Jesus Christ, his son, as their Messiah right? Uh, Jesus talked about uh, lighted candles being put on a candlestick, not put under a bushel, uh, hid from view or in the secret place where no one could uh, receive the benefit of the flickering flame. I don't know if you believe this or not, but we live in a spiritually dark world, right? Sure do. Uh, one person lit with the light of God could lead many uh, or even just one to a new life. And he puts in parentheses, light in Christ Jesus. Amen. Uh, P.S. He writes, lots of times 
Over the years, I have prayed in public over a meal, and someone I didn't know would come and speak to me about it in a positive way. Well, that's good. Amen. P.S.S., he says. Uh, not so much nowadays in our dark world, but I still do it. Amen. So we should still pray and pray to the Lord over our food, no matter if it's uh, done at home or in public. And uh, amen. Not to be seen of men, but to pray to the Lord for our meal and to be thankful for it. And uh, amen. All right. So that is the end of the topic, secret saints. So let's not be a secret saint. Let's get out there and tell somebody about Jesus and let our Light so shine before men that they may see our good works and glorify our God which is in heaven. Amen. So, good advice there. I'm keeping our candle on the candlestick, not under a bushel. <laughs> right? Amen. So, now it's time to get into the topic for today's Daring Devotion. And this is from the book a Daring Devotion, a missions devotional, a 31 day journey with those who lived God's promises, written by. M. R. Conrad, and today we're on day 26, and today's topic is titled The Unbound Gospel, and this is uh, George Whitfield, preacher to the United Kingdom and the American Colonies, 1714 to 1770, and he has this quote here, the whole world is now my parish, he said, George Whitfield, amen, 1714 to 1770. And then Jeremiah one eight says, Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Amen. Jeremiah one eight. So let's get into this topic here about George Whitfield, preacher to the United Kingdom and the American colonies. The unbound gospel. No, no, not his brains out. Don't down with him. Kill him at once. In England, a Christian nation in the 18th century mobs of Roman Catholics, uh, um, Ang um, Anglicans, uh, and local uh, hooligans hurled rocks with their threats. Uh, they assaulted uh, independent preachers and their followers. Why? Because these men and women believed in the necessity of regeneration. To be a true Christian, ye must be born again. Amen. John 3.3. 3. This revival of Gospel truth began with George Whitfield, an ordained Anglican preacher and one of the early leaders of the Methodist movement. In 1735, Whitfield found new life in Christ by grace through faith alone. Not uh, long after him, Whitfield's two uh, friends, John and Charles Wesley, were also born again after witnessing the simple faith of the Moravians. However, the Nominal Christians throughout England, including a majority of pastors and priests, had no spiritual life. Whitfield began to preach regeneration and confront the problem of dead religion. He bemoaned the influence of unregenerate clergy. The reason why congregations have been so dead is because they have dead men preaching to them. How can dead men uh, beget living children? This message, unpopular with the clergy in his denomination, got Whitfield uh, blacklisted. Church doors formally opened to his preaching ministry slammed shut. Undaunted, Whitfield took his message to the streets and fields outside the official churches. He quoted Luke 14.23, Go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. In his journal, he wrote, let not the adversaries say, I have thrust myself out. No, they have thrust me out. And since the self-righteous men of this generation count themselves unworthy, I go out into the highways and hedges and compel harlots, publicans, and sinners to come in, that my master's house may be filled. Whitfield soon encouraged John and Charles Wesley to shake off the confines of the church building for the freedom of preaching outdoors. The idea shocked the brothers and all of England. No one dared to preach outside of a church building without the official sanction of the church. Uh, the Roman Catholic Church, not the real church. But uh, the Wesleys uh, searched the scriptures for guidance. Uh, should they follow Whitfield's lead and preach in the open air in Bristol? Four times they 
came upon a verse that spoke of suffering and death, and John Wesley believed that uh, were he to go to Bristol, he would die. Nevertheless, he declared, I go, and Charles stated, I desire to die with him. Uh, these were no idle fears. John Wesley, in his journal, described one of many life-threatening situations he faced as a result of this decision. At the west end of the, ta the town, seeing a door half open, I would have gone in, but a gentleman in the shop would not suffer me, saying they would pull the uh, house down to the ground. However, I stood at the door and asked, Are you willing to hear me speak? Many cried out, No, no, knock his brains out, down with him, kill him at once. Charles Wesley wrote of a similar circumstance. I had just named my text at St. Ives, Isaiah 40, verse 1, when an army of rebels broke in on us. They began in a most outrageous manner, threatening to murder the people. They broke the uh, sco uh, sconces, dashed the windows in pieces, torn away the shutters, benches, poor box, and all but the stone walls. I stood silently looking on, but mine eyes were unto the Lord. They beat and dragged the women about, uh, particularly one of great age, and trampled on them without mercy. The longer they stayed, the more they raged. The ruffians fell to quarreling among, uh, quarreling among themselves, uh, broke the town clerks, their captain's head, and drove one another out of the room. <laughs> wow. In his journal, Whitfield related how the captain of a ship visited him late one night. He suddenly rose up, uttering the most abusive language, calling me dog, rogue, villain, and etc., and beat me most unmercifully with his gold-headed cane. But my hostess and her daughter, hearing me cry murder, rushed into the room and seized him by the collar. However, he disengaged himself from them and repeated his blows upon me. Had not uh, nearly, or had not nearby residents intervened, Whitfield may not have survived that night. On another occasion, he narrowly escaped uh, stoning in Dublin. Despite violent attacks both on their persons and their character, Whitfield and his associates continued preaching the gospel, stressing the necessity of regeneration. True Christianity is spiritual, not merely societal, but because each sin-deadened heart must be changed by God. The unbound gospel extends its offer of new life from above to every person in every place. Right? Amen? Writing of board a ship on his way to America in 1739, Whitfield declared, The whole world is, my, is now my parish. Wheresoever my master calls me, I am ready to go and preach the everlasting gospel. In his short biography of Whitfield, about a century later, J.C. Ryle uh, wrote, reported that during Whitfield's 34-year ministry, he preached an astounding 18,000 times. Uh, Ryle, Riley, R-L-R-Y-L-E, uh, gives a uh, record of Whitfield's itinerant ministry. Fourteen times did he visit Scotland. Seven times did he cross the Atlantic. Backward and forward, twice he went over to Ireland, as to England and Wales. He tra uh, traversed every uh, county in them. Mm. Uh, God used Whitfield to return the, to return the true gospel to two continents. His efforts brought genuine Christianity back to churches dead with nominal religion. He broke the conventional bounds of his day, preaching wherever excuse me, uh, preaching whenever and wherever God gave opportunity. Today's society expects people to keep their religious opinions to themselves. Spiritually, is, or spirituality is extolled but confined to its own sphere. We are pressured to never let it spill over into our workplaces or casual acquaintances. Respect others' beliefs, they say. By respect, they mean we should treat each opinion is equally legitimate regardless of truth, right? That's not the way it goes. 
Stay in your lane and leave others in theirs. Do not upset society with your exclusive beliefs. However, true spiritual life comes only through Christ. Amen. That's the truth right there. Therefore, all spirituality is not equal. He must be born again is still God's message to both nominal Christians and those raised in other religions. As we share an exclusive gospel requiring spiritual birth, God encourages us like he encouraged Jeremiah, Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Jeremiah 1 8. The New Testament likewise gives us hope, saying, Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and say, and, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Matthew 11, or Matthew 5, 11 and 16. Amen. Uh, make the world your parish. Don't let illegitimate uh, hindrances keep you from preaching the gospel. Share the new life God gave you uh, to you when you were born again. Amen. And so let's keep out there and keep on sharing the gospel and spreading the good word, and good news that Jesus saves. Amen. All right, now it's time for the personal reflection part. And there's four uh, questions here. The first one is, how does fear affect my obedience to the Great Commission? Hmm. Uh, what excuses am I making for not sharing the gospel? What gospel opportunities am I, am I ignoring because societal pressures or others' expectations? And finally, does my testimony extend beyond Sundays? How does it shine at church, home, and work? Good questions. And then we got further reading, Jeremiah 1. And then this book by uh, Arnold A. Uh, Delamore. And it's titled, George Whitfield, God's Anointed Servant in the Great Revival of the 18th Century, uh, Wheaton, Illinois, Crossway, 1990. So that is about George Whitfield and a little bit about John and Charles Wesley. Amen. So praise the Lord. All right. So that is the end of the Daring Devotional. And give me a drink here. Let me get that. Okay, now it's time for today's hymn, and I was surprised that I was able to find an instrumental for this one, even though I've not really heard about it, or at least the title doesn't uh, strike me as uh, familiar, but maybe I have seen it before, so um, this is titled, Behold, Behold the Lamb of God, Amen, and this is hymn 265, another one about the crucifixion of Christ, a spiritual song, written by Richard uh uh, Jukes, J-U-K-E-S, um, and then Daniel F.E. Auber, and um, Richard Jukes lived from 1804 to 1867, and Daniel F.E. Auber lived from 1782 to 1871. So let me uh, press play and try to see if we can sing along with this, if it's easy. I'm not sure, Never. I don't think I've ever heard this one before, so... Try it. play and you can listen to it and then I'll do the stanzas by reading them because I'm having a hard time following along. Alright, I'm going to play again. 
again. So that's what it sounds like, but uh, like I said, it was a little challenging to sing along with. So I will just read you the stanzas here. And uh, again, this is titled, Behold, Behold the Lamb of God. And stanza one says, Behold, Behold the Lamb of God. On the cross, on the cross, for us he shed his precious blood. On the cross, on the cross, oh, hear his all-important cry. Eli, Lamna, Sabachthani, and then um, draw near and see your Savior die on the cross, on the cross. Behold, his arms extended wide on the cross, on the cross. Behold, his bleeding hands inside on the cross, on the cross. The sun withholds its rays of light. The heavens are clothed in shades of night, while Jesus does with devils fight on the cross, on the cross. Come, sinners, see him lifted up on the cross, on the cross. He drinks for you the bitter cup on the cross, on the cross. The rocks do rend, the mountains quake, while Jesus does atonement make. While Jesus suffers for our sake, on the cross, on the cross. And now the mighty deed is done, on the cross, on the cross. The battles fought, uh, the victories won, on the cross, on the cross. To, heavens, uh, to heaven he turns his la uh, languid eyes, tis finished, now the conqueror cries. Then, uh, then bows his sacred head and dies. On the cross, on the cross, wherever I, uh, where I go, I'll tell the story of the cross, of the cross, and nothing else my soul shall glory, save the cross, save the cross. Yea, this my constant theme shall be, through time and in eternity, that Jesus tasted death for me, on the cross, on the cross. Let every mourner rise and cling to the cross, to the cross. Let every Christian come and sing round the cross, round the cross. There, there let the preacher take his stand, and with the Bible in his hand, go preach the doctrine through the land of the cross, of the cross. Amen. And now let me read you this story down here at the bottom. So it says here, uh, one, Jonathan Ireland, uh, recounts the following tale from a friend regarding the profound impact of Richard uh, Jukes and his songs. I was one day in a hairdresser's uh, shop in a country village when a man came in to be shaved, having a handful of printed hymns which he had been singing and selling in the streets. I entered into conversation with him, in course of which he said, uh, Your Jukes, Richard Jukes, has been a good friend to us street singers. I have sung lots of his hymns. People generally would rather hear a nice hymn sung than a foolish song. Depend, depend on it, the singing of hymns in the streets has done a deal of good. For children stand to listen to us, and they get hold of a few lines or of the chorus, and with the tune, or as much of it as they can think of, they run home 
and for days they sing it. I maintain our hymn singing is um, more is of more uh, use than many folks uh, think. I shall always think well of Jukes. Is what he said. And then we have here uh, J. W. Johnson, a Baptist minister, uh, missionary to China, told of an elderly man named uh, Ch Choi It uh, P. Uh, who forsook his idols and worshipped the true and living God. He obeyed the Lord in believer's baptism and earnestly sought to learn Bible doctrine, though as a new convert he was a secret disciple. Uh, through his love for the hymns and encouragement from uh, these lines, he became a bold witness for the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, so that's about these two men here. And now it's time to give you the stanz uh, the references for each stanza. So stanza one we have John one twenty nine, first Peter one nineteen, Matthew twenty seven forty six, and then stanza two we have um, Luke twenty three thirty four and Psalm twenty two twelve. Stanza three is John twelve thirty two and Matt, uh, Mark fourteen thirty six. And then Matthew twenty seven fifty one, and then First Peter three eighteen, and then stanza four we have Romans five eleven, and Colossians two fourteen through fifteen, and then John nineteen thirty, stanza five is First Corinthians two one through two, and then Hebrews two nine, and then stanza. Um, Six, we have First Corinthians one eighteen. So, Amen. All right. So that is the end of the hymn for today. So let me grab the scripture song book, and we'll do the scripture songs from yesterday and today one more time, and then we'll end it for today. So, all right. So yesterday was uh, Nahum one seven. So for the twenty fifth. Nahum one seven. The, the Lord, Lord is good. A stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knoweth him to trust in him. That's right. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knoweth them that trust in him. The Lord is good, a stronghold. And he knoweth them that trust in him. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. And he knoweth them that trust in him. Amen. All right, now today's. Psalms 70, verse 4. Let, let all those that seek thee rejoice, rejoice and be, be glad in thee. And let, let such as love, love thy salvation, salvation say continually, let, let God be magnified. Let, let all those that seek thee rejoice and be glad in thee. And let such as love thy salvation say continually, let God be magnified. Let all those that seek thee rejoice and be glad in thee, and let such as love thy salvation say continually, let God be magnified. Let God be magnified. Amen. All right. Well, that'll be it for today's broadcast. But before I go, let me give you tomorrow's scripture song and then the topics for the Baptist Bread and Daring Devotion uh, books and then the hymn for tomorrow. So tomorrow will be the 27th and we sing in Galatians 2.20. It says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen. So, 
Praise the Lord if you're saved, you're crucified with Christ. Amen. So that's the scripture song. And then tomorrow's topic will be titled, Answered and Unanswered Prayer, Part 1. So let's see, there's two parts to this, Part 1 and Part 2, for tomorrow and Saturday. And so um, we'll find out more about that. And then the passage is John 14, 12 through 14. So, amen. So that's the Baptist bread for tomorrow. And then the Daring Devotion topic for tomorrow for the 27th day is titled The Awful Importance of Eternal Things. And this is uh, uh, Henry uh, Martin, missionary to India and Iran, 1781 to 1812. And then the passage is 1 Peter 1, 23 to 25. So that will be tomorrow's topic about uh, this man, Henry uh, Martin, missionary to India and Iran. So amen, the awful importance of eternal things. All right, so praise the Lord. So put that aside, and then the hymn for tomorrow will be titled, Alas, and Did My Savior Bleed? And this is 266 in the Psalms and Hymns and Spiritual Songs book. And this is by Isaac Watts. And then, um, uh, so let's see, we have two here by Isaac Watts for the next two days. And I believe they're similar, um, they have similar, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, um, uh, sound, sound to the um, to the hymn here. So, um, so instrumental um, sound there. So, uh, amen. And that's the last, and did my Savior bleed? And then the one after that is at the cross. So amen, both by Isaac Watts. So that's uh, for tomorrow. And then there is a story for that one. So amen. And uh, that will be found on MelodyPublications.com is where you can find a copy of that. Amen. they got some other books on there that you can order. The uh, Daily Strength books. Uh, there's four volumes of that. I believe you can order that on that website. Also, if you like devotionals. Amen. And then, of course, the Scripture Song book and CDs are available online at www.dailyscripturesongs.com That's Brother Dean and Sister Patty Runyon's website and they are missionaries to Port Kaituma, Guyana. So pray for them and all those that are doing that work over there and getting the gospel out in that area of the jungles of Guyana. So amen. And um, then we got the Baptist Bread devotional book and the website is www.baptistbread.com or www. Dot timgreenministries.org and that second website has other books and material available on it I'm still sure I have not been on there in a while but uh, amen so if you order that now get a subscription going now you'll probably get the one for March and April so amen and then of course we got that Daring Devotion book and it's available either on the internet or perhaps at your local bookstore so you can check that out and then of course as always make sure we're always getting into God's word first and studying it and reading it and beholding what God would have us to uh, learn from his word and meditate on it. Amen. And really let it sink into your heart and soul and mind. So praise the Lord. So you stay on the straight and narrow path with Jesus. Amen. All right. So that will be it for today's broadcast. So thanks for watching. And may the Lord richly bless you until next time. Bye-bye for now.